So far in our first part on macroeconomics, we have understood the basic aspect of exchange rate, the flexible exchange rate in terms of speculation. The next important concept is with the interest rate. Now let's say there are two countries A and B. Country A provides an interest rate of 8% on the investments. Country B provides an interest rate of 10%. So people from country A would start switching their capital or their currency to country B in lieu of getting a higher interest rate because a customer or a, a, a individual would be looking for higher interest rate. So they would shift their investments to country B because they are getting more investments out there. As a result, what would happen for country A? From the country A, the investments are flowing out of the country. And as a result, the cu currency in the country A gets depreciated. So interest rate has a very important role with exchange rate. The next is income. What would happen? As there is increase in the income, the spending of a person would increase. As the spending increases, the person would buy more of imported products. Now imported goods, when they are bought more, what would happen? This would affect the domestic exports or the domestic products and the amount is flowing out of the country. So the aggregate demand however would increase at a faster pace but the money in circulation is not being utilized within the country it's going out of the country so that's again an important way that the domestic demand may not uh, uh, may not change because of it but yes there would be a significant change in the imported goods that would be registered the next is in long run, how does exchange rate affects the scenario? I take a very simple example. Let's say you buy a shirt for rupees 400 in India and for the same shirt, you are paying, uh, let's say dollar eight in United States. Why? Because I can say one dollar is equal to 50 rupees. With that exchange rate, you are paying eight dollars in United, uh, United States. Now what happens? Let's say the exchange rate changes and the currency depreciates. So $1 becomes 60 rupees. Now the same shirt that you are purchasing in India for 400 rupees would now cost how much in United States? It would cost, cost nearly 480 rupees in United States. So the customers would think that rather than buying a shirt in United States, it's better to buy in India because we can get the shirt for 400 rupees. Now suppose the prices increase. In India, the prices shoot up by 20%. In United States, the price shoot up by 50%. What would happen? To, uh, for these two prices to be equivalent, I can say that $12 must be equal to rupees 480. And then only we can say that would balance out with a currency exchange rate of $1 is equal to 40 rupees. And therefore, we can say in that scenario, the dollar would be depreciated in the other scenario we have rupee which is depreciated so in this scenario it was rupee that was de depreciated when one dollar was around 60 rupees now when one dollar turns out to be 40 rupees i can say yes now the dollar is depreciating not the rupee so exchange rate fluctuates in long run now the next is fixed exchange rate which is again an interesting aspect to understand so here we have the demand and supply curve now demand and supply d for demand and downward sloping as we have done in our previous lectures so here we have the exchange rate this is a curve between dollars and exchange rate which is rupees per dollar and what would happen the exchange rate changes so initially let's say the exchange rate was one dollar is equal to 50 rupees now what happens the government actually wants to encourage export now when government wants to export more government would depreciate its currency since the government would depreciate its currency what would happen the exchange rate would shift from one dollar to one dollar is equal to 50 rupees to one dollar is equal to 70 rupees which shows a clear indication that there is depreciation of the currency when the supply is more than the demand on the other hand in the case of e2 i have demand more than supply and in this case what would happen is appreciation of the currency would take place that means one dollar is equal to 30 rupees for example so that is the revaluation of the rupee which is done and this is done by the government in order to maintain the exchange rate prices and make sure that the domestic currency is 
being maintained and not getting too costlier. So what is the merit and the demerit? The major merits and the demerits of flexible and exchange rate. So uh, I can say fixed and ex flexible exchange rate is the flexible exchange rate is flexible as the name suggests because it has more flexibility. Now, since I say it has more flexibility, what is involved? There is no large stock of foreign exchange reserve, right? Since it is flexible in nature and movement in the trade or the exchange rate takes place because there is always an advantage of surplus and deficit which is seen in balance of payments. What is the fixed exchange rate? Fixed exchange rate where the credibility goes to whom? The credibility of the exchange rate goes directly to the government. There are no other partners involved in it. Now since government has to maintain all the credibility, there is a fact that rise in uh, rise, rise to uh, basically in the speculation or the changes in the speculation would lead to devaluation of the currency. So devaluation of the currency would take place and this would again be maintained by the government. So that means this fixed exchange rate system is highly prone to the attacks of speculation. Speculation means as we have discussed in our previous part one of this video, we said that there is a chance that probably this currency would appreciate or depreciate. So that's what is known as a speculation. Now speculative attacks before the collapse of Burton Woods was extremely important to understand. Now without any uh, formal agreement, what can be best reached is a managed floating system. So managed floating system is a floating system where you have fixed as well as floating as a single part. Now fixed is the managed part. However, floating is the flexible part of the currency. So what happens under this system, we also call it as a system of dirty floating where central banks do not maintain the exchange rate and the exchange rate is being maintained by the market forces. So if I call it as a concept of clean floating, all the exchange rate would be maintained by the market forces. Central banks would have no role to play. But in the case of dirty floating, what happens? There is amalgamation of fixed and floating mechanism. So what happens is central bank would intervene to buy and sell the foreign exchange. So foreign exchange reserves would be bought and sold by whom? By the central bank. In the case of India, it is RBI. The idea is to moderate the exchange rate and it, for that, whatever appropriate actions are required must be taken into account or taken into consideration. Now, what is another thing that is important? The official uh, reserve transactions are never equal to zero in this case. The next is how do we understand the exchange rate management in an international experience? So gold standard from around 1870, when the first world war break out, uh, broke out from 1870 to 1914, it was the prevailing system of gold standard where all the currencies were defined in terms of gold and each participant country actually guaranteed a free convertibility into gold at a fixed price. So this is the price you pay this price, you get this much of the gold. And that was the free disposal of the currency till the first world war. However, later on, the things have started to change. So for example, the exchange rate say, said that the country A can get one gram of gold for one unit of currency. However, country B can get two grams of gold for one unit of currency. So what would happen? Since country B can get one, two grams of gold for one unit of currency, all would try to convert their units into currency B so that they can buy more of gold, as simple as that. And the rates used to fluctuate based on the reserves which were taken into account. However, David Hume in 1752 refuted this concept and they said, what would happen if the stocks of the gold fell? Now, if the stocks of the gold decline, all prices would decline. Now, as the all prices would decline, the, there would be no country that would be worse off because all the countries are sailing in the same boat, so no country would be affected. So cheaper goods would be produced in home and imports would slowly decrease 
exports would start to rise for any country if this is the scenario what would happen the multiplier would be uh, would be re represented as kpy where i say if there is a 4% increase in the output what would happen the gold supply would also increase by 4% that was another simple thing that was laid down so there were two important components which were explained the first was the fractional reserve banking fractional reserve banking simply talked about a concept that we help to economize gold uh, and it was explained by paper currency so paper currency was backed by nearly one fourth of the gold currency later on it was re realized that there can be another standard which is known as the gold exchange standard now what was gold exchange standard gold exchange standard was adopted by other countries where the money exchange was at fixed prices right and this price was with respect to gold despite of the fact that the country could hold less gold or no gold the fixed prices were with respect to the gold now keeping these things into consideration the deflation was kept at bay till 1929 and this was also due to finding of the gold mining centers in south africa however later in 1994 1944 bretton woods Con conference was held and bretton woods uh, laid down imf and world bank and at the same time it talked about reestablishments for the fixed exchange rate system so two tier uh convertibility was laid down so what was the idea behind two tier convertibility one was the gold was fixed at rupee uh, dollar 35 per ounce so for every ounce of gold you would have to pay dollar 35 so let's say for franc it was five times then you would have to pay five times the amount the next important was the key currency was changed to gold and the local currency was changed to key currency so that was another convertibility method so one was directly managing gold that 35 dollars would give you one ounce one ounce of gold so i go to bank i give 35 dollars i get one ounce of gold and later on it was realized that gold is actually a scarce commodity you cannot have that much amount of gold that could be brought into circulation so ultimately this system was to be ruled out and in 1967 this system of gold was replaced by special drawing rights and that was in the name of paper gold released by imf so this gold where 35 dollars would equal to 1 ounce uh, the gold was displaced by special drawing rights as it was called as and this was the paper gold with intentions to increase the stock of international reserve so still now we were focusing only on a limited amount of circulation because that was the only possible option because we had limited reserves of gold but with this introduction of special drawing rights we could increase our stocks in international reserves so originally it was 35 dollars to 1 ounce but later this system was removed and now it is weighted as the sum of the currencies from five nations so four currencies which is dollar pound uh, pound euro sorry euro and then you have yen so four of these currencies from us uk japan and euro from two nations france and germany so five nations the the together from the five nations the weighted sum of value was taken into account in 1971 United States no longer believe that this five dollar, thirty five dollar to an ounce system could work, and this system was ultimately removed off. And then there was a Smithsonian agreement which was released. The Smithsonian agreement uh, actually said that the exchange rate could be two point five percent plus minus the new central rate which was released, and this was the new parameter which was. Uh, understood and the idea was to reduce pressure on the deficit nations however in the meanwhile numerous experiments were done for example in uk dollar in 2000 dollarization was done that means they laid off their own native currency and shifted everything to dollar so anything in the uk dollar market was now available for dollar similarly in argentina a currency board system was introduced 
where currency was backed to the foreign exchange. However, this system was again later repealed and was no more into existence. So this was one of the last chapters that we have covered under macroeconomics for class 12. If you have any questions or any doubts, please let us know. The complete sessions on economics are available on Doorstrip Tutor in the link below and that covers the complete UPSC preparation. Uh, for CUET candidates preparing for UG, uh, we do have an extensive question bank for practice available now. So don't miss the free questions which are available for CUET UG preparation for you. Wish you very good luck. Have a wonderful day ahead.